Jingle Jangle A Christmas Journey has become an instant classic in the Christmas movie tradition, critically acclaimed for its unbridled, joyously festive spirit and gorgeous visuals, sound and music. I'm Rob LaCourie, a senior editor at Gold Derby, here with composer John Debney, the man responsible for the rich and evocative score for the film. John, I was so impressed that the Academy's music branch actually like, paid attention and included your score on this shortlist alongside some really impressive composers. It shows they were paying attention, doesn't it? Thank you, Rob. Yeah, I, you know, I'm. no one was more surprised than I was. And uh, because, you know, this is the kind of movie that I think Christmas movies sometimes sort of get ignored. People love them. Um, but I was surprised and very, I mean, humbled by the fact that I'm in the same company as people like James Newton Howard and Tom Newman, um, Atticus and Trent. Um, you know, so I, I, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful, very surprised and very grateful. Yeah, but I mean, I, to, I, I, to be honest, I am um, maybe shouldn't have been so surprised because anyone who's seen the movie and anyone with kids has probably seen it already, like I have, and who's listened to the score can mm -hmm. see that a lot of work was put into this film. And that's why it's also shown up in the song shortlist and the makeup and hairstyling shortlist. And it'll probably show up in other maybe yeah. categories as well. Like it's a really beautiful, um, visually and orally, a beautiful film. Um, and I'm just wondering when, when, you're, when you have an opportunity to score a film like this that is so rich in terms of its visuals and, and, and its sound, um, do you just think I'm just gonna go all out here and just throw as much as I can creatively into this score or like what, what was your thought process at the beginning? Well, thank you. You know, I agree with you. I think David E. Talbert, our wonderful director, uh, who, and I agree with you, I hope, I hope he gets recognition because I think he should. Um, this thing, this film, this experience was such a immersive, in, inviting, inclusive journey. And I, I honestly can't overstate it. I think um, it is so, imp it's an important film to me and, and I think to the world where, you know, this is, this is the dream of David Talbert. David Talbert dreamt of this for 20 years. He's been working on the script for that long. And his, his vision was not to create necessarily a Christmas film, but he wanted to create a film that was uplifting and again, inclusive. Um, he said to me numerous times along the way, he wanted me to dream big and to go for go for the you know most amazing score that I could and you know when you're given that kind of opportunity and that kind of palette it uh it opens the floodgates to creativity and I honestly felt it my duty my job to create something that um that would be really special and I I just literally like I always do but especially for Jingle Jangle I wanted to create my best work um, you know, in, in that I've ever done, or certainly my best work that I've done in a long time. So that was the kind of um, adventure we were on. We wanted to create something that visually, as you said, visually it's spectacular. The, the visual effects, the costumes, the hair styling, the, the cast, um, the cast is just terrific. So every every craft in every area was really on their game. And I think we all pushed each other to try to do the very best job we could. And in my case, you know, I, I was asked to kind of jump into the song production also. You know, you have this wonderful song by John Legend. Um, it was this big, beautiful canvas for me. So I didn't take that lightly uh, to answer your question. It, it was, that important and you know looking under the hood a little bit David Talbert and I would we became brothers on the film and he would call me sometimes late at night and have an idea or two and then sure enough the next morning I would sort of sleep on it and think about it and he was always right and he he guided me to what you've seen which is um you know in some some areas of the movie that the score takes over 
and other areas very supportive. Um, and there's an emotional, there's a deep emotional thread. So for me, it was that kind of movie. It was sort of touching, you know, all the bases uh, for me musically. And that's what was so wonderful and beautiful about that. It, the gift of being able to write this music for this movie. Yeah, you know, apart from some of the more recognizable um, Christmas motifs like bells and flute that feature throughout mm -hmm. the score, it's to me, if I didn't know this was from Jingle Jangle, I would have just thought, okay, so this is a really awesome action adventure movie mm -hmm. with some emotional twists in it. I, I just, it's not, as you say, it's not a typical Christmas score. And for example, there's a really great ch track in the score called Air Shaft Adventure, for instance. Mm -hmm. It's pure mm -hmm. heart pounding adventure. Um, there's, there's inspiring choral music, there's gorgeous string elements, you've got a lot going on. And I'm just wondering, for a, score, uh, for a track like that, for example, is it daunting or challenging mm -hmm. to make um, a track that epic without overtaking the movie, but, you know, underscoring it? Like, what, what is, what's your mind process? Wow, that's such a wonderful question. Thank you for that. Um, that particular track was one of those tracks late in our, our process where um, I knew I had a couple of big set pieces coming up. Another one is the uh, a scene where the kids fly with, with our robot uh, buddy. Uh, but that particular uh, cue, that music, Airshaft Adventure, it was one of those moments, honestly, Rob, where I just had to write. I just had to go for it. And I... and Composers out there or writers out there, I'm sure would 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 know what that that means. That means let the floodgates open and just go for it. And knowing that our director um, will pull me back or tell me to go farther. And you're right though, the nuts and bolts of it were very aggressive sound in there. We're we're in a factory, and then you know we're in this tunnel, and music has to play a role. It has to it has to tell it has to propel us along, but also has to change with all the little ins and outs of, of the moment. Uh, without spoiling it, there, there are a lot of little, you know, turn, twists and turns that I had to make. But I kind of love that, to be honest with you. That's sort of what I do, as it were, Rob. I don't know why I'm able to do that, but that's kind of in my wheelhouse. So I would love to tell you that 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 very kind of long piece of music, maybe five and a half, six minutes, took me a while to write, but that was actually one of the quicker pieces because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to that and love that and like to sink my teeth into things like that. I'd love to make those twists and turns and make them musical and make them also organic and not too obvious, as you said. I mean, there are times when music can overpower, et cetera, or effects can overpower. Um, but that scene in the air shaft was a true, I think, blend of the coming together of sound and our director. And there were moments where the music takes off, mm -hmm. other moments where the, where the sound takes the day. And it's kind of like that. It's um, those kinds of scenes for me are really fun and challenging and that's really what I wanted to do. I sort of put on my um, adventure hat, as you as you said so well, um, and just kind of let that flow. Let and and you know, luckily again, we had a really wonderful sound team. All kudos to them, who sort of you know we knew when the music should come up a bit, and we knew when it should come down. So it was truly, and it always is in the best sense. It's always a marriage of sound music. So that was one of the fun set pieces for me was doing that air shaft adventure. Yeah, it's as you say that the, uh, the the marriage of the sound design, especially the mixes and your work is so critical and it can go horribly wrong, <laughs> which we won't it go can. for other people. But yeah. um, this film as well um, has a lot of distinct elements. So for example, for people who haven't seen it yet, um, there's this emotionally evocative cello and violin that you use, some of it's slightly pensive. Then you've got the tango inspired brass and percussive instruments for Don Juan Diego, a great character played by Ricky Martin. So you've got a lot going on there, right? And I'm just, but, but I still found this to be quite timeless. I couldn't really pinpoint an era or a genre. Okay. 
Is that what you were going for? Well, that's so kind of you. Um, you're exactly right, by the way. The, the intention from David to me was make it timeless. Um, a couple of interesting things with what you said, which is so spot on. David didn't want it to be uh, necessarily a Christmas score. And so we, we would use those elements, but we use them kind of sparingly. And what we did use, and I, I'm pretty sure you noticed it, um, we used a gospel choir in places, just we're a gospel soloist in, in a few spots. And that was really per David. I mean, I, I have to give all credit to David. He kept telling me, um, I want it soulful. He calls me, he's, he always says, he's a big, handsome man. He said, Debney, I want this to be soulful. I want this to be, you know, use all the adjectives that he used with me. But it was all to great effect because it made me realize what he was trying to say. And what he was trying to say was, we want to honor all the culture of, of these characters. It wasn't just Victorian England, right, Rob? It was Victorian Eng England, Victoria, uh, with sort of uh, African-inspired costuming and hairstyle. Yeah. And David pointed that out to me. He really had to guide me through, like that this, we want we want to have this inclusive of all the all the cultural references of the film and of the cast, and so it was that sort of melange. The um, the very first the opening of the movie, the very one of the very first pieces of music, is sort of a big introduction to the town, and it's it's inspired by African music. There are African drums and and there are sort of African chant choir. So it was very different for me and very challenging. And again, utterly fun and utterly exciting because I, there were things in the movie, of course, that I, I didn't really know. But again, David being the great director he is, he really pointed those out to me. And uh, it, was, it was a great journey in that way. Um, yeah. You know, at one point, I hope I'm not spoiling it for, for the people that haven't seen the film, but there's a scene where our, our children um, have to, you know, find a clue and then they find this wonderful robotic being in Buddy and then, then the magic takes off and it literally takes off. And I did that, I kept writing that long piece of music, about eight minute piece of music over and over. And at one point when our characters take off and fly, he reminded me, he goes, well, Debney, you realize something about the scene, right? And I was looking at the scene through my experience of, of two kids that are up in this great laboratory, you know, finding these clues and trying to find this being. And they do find Buddy, who's the robot. Um, and he said to me, he goes, you know, and, and I, I assume this is true. He said, this is the first time black people have flown in a movie. And it sort of stopped me and I realized, wow. And that's so important. He's right. Yeah. An incredibly important moment. By the way, just like Black Panther was a, an incredibly important film for all for many reasons um, culturally. Uh, this to me is also that film, and I honored that. And literally, that opened the floodgates for me to write the adventure theme, which which the theme in Jingle Jangle that became the adventure theme. Yeah. And that really, wow, that was so powerful to me. Yeah. Um, that the adventure theme is the adventure theme for humanity. It's for everyone. And so all, all along the way, I, I got a chill even telling you the story. All along the way, David Talbert, the care and love he put into every frame was evident. Yeah. yeah. And um, I can't thank him enough because I think and I've told them this, the only reason I might be on this wonderful short list is because there's truth to the movie. There's such truth. And yeah. And I wanted I wanted the music to be truthful like that and honor that. And maybe that's why I'm lucky enough to have had my colleagues hear my music. And that's I'm right. Grateful. See, um, it, these days we're all very interested in colorblind casting, for example, but this is not that. This is a primarily black cast with 
um, a lot of African influence. Your music yes. has some really beautiful soul touches that are very intentional. I can, I mean, you can just see there are reasons for why you've included it. You also mix your score really effectively with the great songs that are written for the for the film. Yes, thank and you. Know, the songs are great. Really good. And you know, I've spoken to other composers similar to work that you've done, for example, like Christoph Beck for Frozen and um, and 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 even um. Uh, Lily Goranson for Black Panther. And so it's really, it can be quite challenging to marry up the score to the songs. You've done yeah. that before for The Greatest Showman. You know, I was saying last night on social media, yeah. to me, The Greatest Showman's a masterpiece. It was my favourite film of that year. This film reminds me a lot of that. And a lot of it has to do with yeah. your music. And so what do you say about marrying up the score to, the, to a, a really effective song score? Boy, that's a great question. And that was job number one for me, honestly, Rob. It was critically important that the songs inform the score and vice versa. Um, you know, we, as with Greatest Showman, by the way, it's critically important, in my opinion, critically important to um, have it be very seamless. You know, I think the worst thing, at least for, for me, and I think for some people, and it's probably subconsciously, by the way, you know, to have just a song blare in or, score overtake a song or if if the two aren't married we, there's that word again if they aren't married well it can take you out of the movie it yeah. really can and with my friend michael gracie thank you for your kind words michael gracie did a brilliant job as we know on the greatest showman um i don't think he gets enough credit that's my opinion but anyway mm -hmm. but, you know the audience the world loves that film yeah well, it was the same, it was the same challenge. It was, you have these amazing songs, of course, Pasek and Paul in that movie. And in this movie, David Nathan and Philip Lawrence, and of course the amazing John Legend. Yeah. Um, they had to ring true. And we worked really hard on those transitions uh, coming in to a song, out of a song, so that the audience is, not taken out of the movie but instead hopefully is just carried along with it yeah you know like, like it's and and that you you nailed it because that was the big job that was the big because i mean to be honest i'm not like the biggest musical fan and when there are some films where the, you know the song's about to start i subconsciously will be like oh okay yeah yes <laughs> you know that doesn't me too. happen. Me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it. Like, oh, South Pacific. Here comes the. Yeah, you know. we go. Where is it? Like, it's a classic, but it's a different. Yeah. I think it was a different time, wasn't it? We were a little more, and those were meant to be yeah. stage musicals. So. Yeah, exactly. So you're right. You're right. These, you're days, right on. these days, that you just wouldn't get get away with that, and that, and then that's exactly what happens in, in Jingle Jangle. Now, my yeah. final question Thank is: This is what I find so interesting is that when you think of a John Debney score and you've done so many, for me, it's always like your collaboration with Disney, right? <laughs> yeah, you're still yeah. working. You've got yeah. such a great history with Disney and like, um, yeah. you know, you've, you've scored stuff for their theme parks, for example, but then what do you get nominated for at the Oscars? Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ, completely <laughs> yeah. out of your wheelhouse, but it was, so, that score was incredible. Take us back to 2004 or 2005, <laughs> When you oh, received wow. that nomination, what was that like? Oh my God, another chill. Um, yeah, you're going back. Uh, uh, that, that's oh, a great question. Thank you for that question. Um, you know, I, I was the least obvious choice for that film. And, yeah. and I mean that. Um, you know, there were a lot of names being thrown around and I, that film came to me, it was a complete fluke, really came to me through the back door. I knew the producer was a very good childhood friend of mine. Uh, they were out of sorts uh, regarding what kind of score, what kind of music should be in the, that movie. And so I demoed a few pieces actually. Um, and lo and behold, Mel heard them and liked them very much and hired me. So immediately I was terrified, honestly, about it because the movie is so, it's so visceral and so powerful and sometimes hard to take, very hard to take. And for a lot of people and for me included. So that was an amazing journey. It was, um, it was so hard to do. It was so hard to do. 
Um, it ended up really being Mel, Mel and I having to bond almost like, a, you know, those great war movies, well, Braveheart. It was like being in Braveheart. You know, it was literally being under the gun every day and trying to find the little, you know, unlocking the door to lead to, to, um, to where we ended up. Interesting thing about that score was we wanted, Mel wanted a very world score sound and that's what we did. So the beginning of the film, it's sort of very amorphous and very, very kind of droney and yeah. electric cellos and voices and eight string violins, Shankar graced me with his, his work. And we, as we went through, strangely with that film, it gets more and more conventional. And sort of towards the end, it's this massive orchestral vo choir score. So it's a very different, it was, you know, wonderful. It was probably one of my best scores I think I've ever done in the sense that I didn't know where this thing was going to go. And, and so it, every day it would change a little bit. But nonetheless, I'm, I'm really grateful. But it took a lot of heart and soul. And I think I lost 25 pounds during it because, <laughs> you know, I mean, you'd know, yeah. being a writer and an interviewer, it's like yes. every day it's like, oh, and then there's this, and then there's this, and it's yeah. heart wrenching. You got to so, your <laughs> Jingle, yeah. And so getting back to Jingle Jangle. Jingle Jangle was different. It was hard, but it was like uplifting every day. There'd be a new, you know, Christmas present. And I'd have to open it up and, and find out what it was. But to answer your question too, that was a huge honor for me and totally unexpected to be nominated. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was strangely surreal. You know, I remember being at the award show and sitting there and, and my category was like the second award. And so I'm sitting there with my wife, first time we've ever been there, first time ever nominated. And we're sitting there and I think it was John Travolta or somebody came up and, and before he knew it was over and my, my lovely friend, Jan Kaczmarek won, really happy about that, by the way. Yeah. He won for Finding Neverland, which was a great score. Mm. And so it was like, now I can relax. And um, we, had, we had a ball at the after party, but it was fluky. You know, it was all of a sudden we're there and, you know, it, it's a blur. It's a blur. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just getting on the short list this year was like, that's all. It, it's wonderful. It, that's all that matters. I don't expect anything. No. I'm just so happy that people listen to the music. That was I mean, the main. That's, that's the bottom line. It'll it it um it'll expose the film to more people and the score. And in, on that note, everybody go out and listen to the score, watch the movie, and watch all of our great contender chats on Gold Derby. And John, good luck at the Oscars and all the awards season this year. And hopefully, we'll catch up next time. Thanks, Rob. You're great. Great to see you. And cheers. Be well. Thank you.